For about the last decade, I've been a Mac guy and I've had a Mac mini mounted underneath my desk here. You can see there's storage and there's my Mac mini with horrible cable organization. Uh, but I recently built myself a gaming computer, which is over there, and I've been spending a lot of time on it. So I'm going to sell my Mac mini and I'm just going to use my laptop. I'm going to use this uh, little dock thing here to be able to connect to the monitor and have all the external stuff that I need because uh, it has all of the stuff that I need. It can supply power, it has USB interfaces, it has everything I need to be able to get this going. And here's my beautiful, beautiful MacBook. So we're here in Onshape and we're gonna go ahead and design this laptop stand. It's not gonna be anything complicated and I have some ideas of what I wanna do, but I'm not totally positive of how I wanna accomplish this. So I'm gonna start off with just a general rectangle. Uh, it's gonna be seven by about four and a half inches or so. Uh, and that's gonna be the maximum size of this thing. Uh, now, what I'm thinking of doing is putting in a little arc going over here uh, so that it kind of goes up, but I need space at the bottom as well. There's a lot of stuff I need to figure out on this still. Uh, so I'm going to leave that as is for right now, and then I'm going to extrude it uh, a total of, let's see, it needs about 0.9 inches or so according to my dog caliper to uh, get in there. Uh, so it's actually a little smaller than that, but I'm going to go with 0.9, and then I'm going to add uh, 3 eighths and another 3 eighths. Uh, and those three eighths are going to be the sides of what we have there. And does that work? Okay. Then I'm going to go in here and sketch out some of the stuff that I would like to have. Uh, we're going to go in here and get a rectangle put in. And I need to do some work in figuring out what the size that's going to be. But this is going to be three eighths. And then this is also going to be three eighths. Uh, and then from the bottom, I want to put a little scoop or arc in here so the cables can run under it if I need it to. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the three point arc tool and we'll get that in there. And then I'll dimension from the side as well just so it's consistent through the whole thing. And then we have a, a touching all the way through to the bottom. So we have three eighths, three eighths. And then this bad boy, I don't know, 0.9. Ooh, my, no, not that. Okay, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, let me get rid of that for now. And yeah, we'll do that. All right. And then the last thing I need to do is I would like to put an arc on this. So from here to there, put a little arc. Although it doesn't really need it, uh, I might just put fillets down on the corners here. Uh, let's do that because the arc means it's going to be really sitting on just the tangent points. And it's not going to be sitting totally on there. If we put a little fillet in there, it'd be easier to print one, uh, stronger too, uh, but also it uh, allows the uh, computer to sit in a little further. Uh, so we'll go in with our fillet tool. We'll add one and two. Uh, a quarter inch radius seems fine. And we'll do the same thing here. And then I just need the dimension from here to the bottom of what I want that to be. So if I go to dimension here and then click on that bottom line, uh, Let's try 0.75, see what that does. And that looks like enough space. If we go between these two spots, we can see that we have 0.3 inches, which should be fine. Three tenths of an inch, uh, and that should be more than enough. So I'll finish that sketch, then we're gonna extrude this and this. We're gonna remove all of it. So instead of blind, we'll do through all. And we'll go through and do that. Now that looks fine. Uh, the last thing we need to do, or not last thing, but we're getting close to the end of so I need to put that arc on there. Uh, so I'm going to go sketch and click on there, go back over to the front view, and we'll get our arc set up. It'll be something like that, and we just need to kind of play with some dimensions and figure out exactly how this is going to be. So if we do one inch there, one inch on there, and then we need to figure out how far it's going to be from the top here, maybe 0.25. Uh, it doesn't look very nice. Let's go with three quarters of an inch. Okay. And then we're going to take this top area and remove and distance through all. There we go. We have uh, a nice little slice there. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to blow out the sides here just a little bit. So we're going to sketch on the bottom here. And uh, we're going to go with rectangle tool. And we're just going to blow that out a little bit. And that will make more sense in a moment here. But we're going to blow this out there. Dimension this is going to be 7. Now we'll use the equal sign to set that also at the same distance. No, it doesn't look like it wants to go right now. So we're going to do this 
and this will be the same. There we go. And then we'll set this and this to be the same. And then we can dimension these. Uh, definitely doesn't need to go out that far. Maybe like three eighths is more than enough of a little buffer. And then I can extrude this and this. Uh, we're going to change the direction. And we're going to make sure we add it. If we don't, you see how we have three parts? Uh, we don't want that. We want one solid part. And we're going to have that go up, uh, I don't know. We'll do three eighths. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect print time all that much. And it should look pretty nice. All right. So that's going to be the stand itself. Uh, now we're going to add some fillets to kind of decorate it up and make sure that it does what we need it to do. So I'm going to do 3 8 divided by 2, which is also 3 16 So that's going to be all rounded off there. Uh, we'll put the same fillet on that edge and that edge. And put it there and there. Oh, let's just round that whole area off. So there and there <coughs> and I think I have the same thing for all of them I think alright so let's set our check mark there and just make sure that's all well and good looks like a big taco uh, I might put a little decoration of some type in there just to kind of I don't know do something more so let's sketch on here. I'm going to do another three point arc. And then we'll dimension from here to that edge. Be one inch from here to that edge is also going to be one inch. From here to the bottom of our part is going to be 1.25. This one will have the same dimension when I click on the right things. <laughs> All right, we'll go in there to that corner, 1.25, fantastic. And then we'll make a line going across. Then I can finish that sketch and extrude that and remove distance through all. And then the last thing I need to do is just add some fillets to that to make it better. All right, and this is going to require support, I think, to get that arc fully set up there. But that's a pretty simple little holder that should support the laptop. Uh, it has a place for the cables to pass through and is all good to go. So what we're going to do is going to export this, bring it into, uh, I guess I'm going to use my flash torch for this. I'm going to use uh, work a slicer, and then we'll see exactly what this is going to look like at a little bit more scale and a little bit more uh, seeing what's going on there. So we'll jump over there in just a second. All right, so we brought in this laptop stand in the Orca Slicer. You can see that it's all well and good there. It easily fits within uh, the boundaries of our printer, uh, which is always a plus. Now, strength-wise, this doesn't need to be a super strong thing at all. Uh, it's just holding a laptop. It does need to have a little bit because it's it's a decently heavy laptop, but it's nothing like that's going to be structural as far as taking abuse back and forth all the time. It, put the laptop in there and it just needs to hold it. Uh, so once it's set, it's good. So I'm going to leave that at two wall loops. I'm not going to change the infill at all. I'm going to leave that at its 15%. Uh, uh, and I'm happy with all of that. If we go over to support, we're going to enable supports because I think we might need them. Uh, for some of this. I don't think we'll need it for this, but I have a feeling it's going to generate it anyway. Uh, but let's go ahead and slice that plate up and just see what it does for us and how long it's going to take uh, and all of that. So this is going to be a 3 hour and 22 minute print. You can see that it did definitely generate support on the bottom all the way through, which is fine. And then not all of this, but just the parts where it really starts to overhang, it has all of that. Uh, I'm not thrilled with this style of how it goes. Uh, I don't like the look of that in general. I think it looks kind of like garbage overall. Um, and I could en enable smoothing and all that, but I want to just do a test print, see how it all works. And then once we know that it works, it's going to do its thing. Uh, so when we take a look here, uh, it's $2.34 worth of material. You can actually update the pricing of each of the spools if you want and go crazy. Um, spool that I have in there right now, I paid $13 for. So that's based on that. Uh, it's using... Uh, Let's see the total filament is 116 grams uh, and then we're good to go so we're going to print this up and see how it works uh, in about three and a half hours
And here's the print. I think it turned out pretty nice. There's a couple little runs and a couple little areas that I would like to smooth out if this were ever like a production part, but just for home, it's fine. The support came off no problem. And you can see that it lines up with my MacBook just wonderfully. There's a cable pass through on the bottom so I can charge it. And I'm really happy once I get this thing all set up, I'll be thrilled.